my style. These races are more grindy and softer pace, bigger groups. It's a different style of racing. Are you working a lot on tactics and strategy before in the race week, or is it just automatically as it happens? Um, I have an idea of what I think will happen, but trying to predict what's going to happen is almost impossible because, you know, of course it's a pre-race hype and talk all week. This is what's going to happen and these are the people you've got to look out for. So, after being here for eight years, it's, you realise it's all talk. It's all media hype and talk and it all, it all pans out when the gun goes. And that fear and those inhibitions and, and someone has to step up to win, you know, and a lot of people are scared to do that. It sounds like a stupid word, scared, yeah. but they are. You've got to be prepared to take a chance and, and make a move when it matters. And sometimes that takes courage. Sometimes that takes you know, making the room move at the right moment will win you the race. But it's trusting your instincts and knowing when that right moment is. Last year, everyone said, Chris Lieto, oh, yeah. He went too hard on the bike. If he held off a little bit, he could have run and won the title. Yet, yeah, two years before, everyone was raving how great Norman Stadler was. Because yeah. he went on the bike. See, so everyone's an expert in hindsight. <laughs> the big bubble you know, was bigger of course, and bigger. Everyone suddenly... On Saturday night at midnight, you speak to everyone and they're an expert on the race. So you saw it happen. You know, they're like, oh, mate, Chris Leano was always my pick. He was always so strong and it was the perfect year to do that. You're like, yeah, sure, mate. So you realise that you have to have that ability to read a race. You know, you have your idea of why identifying the strengths and weaknesses of your competitors, of what they're capable of doing and what you think they would do and... If you were in their shoes, how would you attack the race? I guess that's how you look at it. And um, But to predict that 100% is impossible because people, what people should do and what they actually do come race day is two different things. So that's why what you think is going to happen in your head and what actually happens in the race are usually two different things. And being able to adapt and change is critical in uh, being successful here. Don't you think it's one of your strengths to be able to do that compared to the other? Oh, that's my absolute strength. That's it, my absolute strength. And I think, you know, the opportunity, I've never been an opportunistic racer where, where I don't, I, you know, I don't sit back and wait for other guys to make mistakes. You know, I've always been an aggressive racer, a, a, a go for it type of guy, make my own luck, make my own wins, you know, where success in this race sometimes doesn't go to that style of a style of racer but that being said I think the biggest stars of this race are the aggressive races the ones that people remember the most the Stadlers the McCormacks the, yeah Tim DeBoon won here twice but he was he's a great 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 champion don't get me wrong but he was an opportunist he waited for others to make mistakes and capitalised on it I just don't think that inspires people personally. Right. So, yeah, my strength is that, but we'll see. I think there's a lot more guys, younger guys who are coming that are, that are young and prepared to, to not be opportunists, and they can quite easily change how a race is raced, change, change the whole dynamics and the outcome of the event overall. They might win it, but they can shape it very, very much, and uh, if you can play off their nerves and their uh, inexperience and use that to your advantage, wow, it's a, it's a big benefit. Did you change your, you can change this feeling of this pre-race feeling to a lot these years, compared yeah. last year, the years before? Oh, I said once I won this race, I'd never come back. Well, that was three yeah, years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That was three years ago. <laughs> So uh, here we are. I'm here again, but um, yeah, when I first came here, I was young. Well, not as young as some of the guys here, but I was the best short course guy in the world and decided to come across to Ironman. 
I thought I'd win this race first time round and be back for the Olympics in Athens. But that was eight years ago and it didn't work out that way. It took me, what, six, six attempts to win this, five years to win this race. Six attempts. You know, I got some seconds or fifths and some DNFs and it was a learning on the way. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, am I a different person? Yeah, I've realised that, yeah, this race is, you know, it's it happens on the day. You know, it, it, you can be in the best physical form of your life. You can, you, you can have done everything right. And in my early years, I don't know how I lost this race because I still look back and shake my head thinking, wow, how did I blow that? But it just didn't work on the day. It didn't... It didn't happen for me. Whether I cracked, whether whether I, I my inexperience tried to I was trying to prove a point too early. I was too aggressive too early. Trying to stamp my authority. Look at me. Look at me. And uh, yeah, it paid. I suffered in the worst way here. And over time, I matured as a racer and realised, you know what, the race is the first person across, the first person back to the pier, not the first person. Uh, Pilani Road or the first person you know, it's the person who's back to the pier first and uh, you can take the marathon to do that it doesn't need to be one in the first three hours four hours, so just be you know, I think I've matured as a racer a little bit I got, and I and I, I feel like that in these last couple of years has been my biggest strength, and I enjoy now more the, the journey and the experience of the day because I'm not so caught up on finish mm -hmm. positions. I'm caught up on my own experience on the day, what I'm taking out of the race on a personal level. Because I think last year, even though I didn't win, if you, if you only assess things on finish places or medal colours, then I would say last year was a complete and utter failure. Mm -hmm. But I honestly, when I'm honest with myself, last year was probably my best race in Kona. From where I came from, what I went through, and it really showed my maturity as a racer to some degree because my I to my ability to suffer. And I took more of that. I took more from that race last year on a personal level. And probably, you know, in 15 years' time, when no one cares anymore about me or Craig Alexander, or and I'm sitting on my lounge at home and I'm reflecting, I think I'll probably take more out of that race personally than I will out of the race I won. But it also gives you a lot of confidence this year, doesn't it? Yeah, it just gives me the confidence to know that if, if it, you know, I think nerves and apprehensive, apprehension come from your own insecurities, your own fears. How you're going to handle the day, are you going to be able to handle the pain, are you going to be able to, you know, deal with what, the, what Iron Man brings to you on that day. And I know what I learned last year was if it comes to a supper fest, jeez, I can win that one hands down. I'm prepared. I can, I can suffer really, really well, which is a, which is a big plus. I think that's maturity. I think the older guys, they're in a different place. When you're younger, you panic a little bit more. You, when you suffer, you start to shut down. You, you think things aren't going right. As you get older, you're a lot, you're able to regroup a little bit more and put things in perspective a lot quicker and, and lock down and focus a lot more. That's just basic race experience and, uh, yeah. I'm in a good place when it comes to that. I'm actually, I actually enjoy the suffering. It's, is there it, another guy in the race that is as able to suffer as you are? I think Craig Alexander is a, a guy who can suffer well. Mm -hmm. uh, just knowing where he came from, he's, he's come to, he's been in the sport 16, 17 years, but it's only been in the last four years, mm -hmm. five years, four and a half years that he's really shot. So he's a late bloomer, you know, but he has the experience, you know, people are telling, oh, this new Craig Alexander, Craig Alexander is a new guy. He's absolutely, he's, a, he's older than me. But he, uh, where his advantage is now, he's, he's found that he's, he's got the experience and he's got the ability to suffer. So he's a, he's a big asset, a big a guy who can suffer. I think, uh, I think the guys who have been here a few times, know what they're in for. You know, you can't, it's a, a, there's a term they use in boxing is you, you don't ever underestimate a former champion. They've got a knockout punch, you know, and that's the same in our sport. 
you don't underestimate the guys who have suffered here, who, are, who know what to expect, who know how this race unfolds, who know, know that this day is a long one, and anything can change on the Queen K. And the guys who have raced here, Ronnie, um, Norman and Farris, they, they laugh, but you know, they can do anything, Marino Bonacca, you know, those type of guys, uh, uh, Tim O'Brock, you know, everyone's telling Andreas Rayler and Andreas Rayler, as was heading. Yeah, they've been here twice, you know, and uh, and they, they definitely have the horsepower to do it. They're definitely athletically capable. But it takes balls to step up and do it. And they're going to ask themselves the question whether the pressure of a nation, like Andreas Rayler in Germany's eyes, has already won this race. <laughs> I just did interviews with the German press and they're like, can anybody beat this guy? Well, he's going to be feeling that pressure out there if he's coming in third place, in second place. You have to... We were told you have to turn around. Oh, really? The chef said you have to turn around. I need to turn that light off, probably. Is there going to be enough light for you to shoot in here? If that's off, it just might be a bit bright for you. I can cut it off, right? We take sound and we continue to have enough other shots than to... Do you want that off? No or? problem. No, I'm okay. You can turn it off. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's for you, really. It's, uh, if you want it off, it's off. If you want it on, it stays on. How do you want it? Uh, yeah, thank you. Hey, you're relaxed. I'm relaxed. No, I'm good. I'm you're good? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.